Hello, this is Steve from Beedale's Leatherworks. And today's project is this beautiful John Lobb pair of shoes. Now, it's a simple, plain looking loafer, but um, John Lobb shoes are pretty, uh, pretty good quality, top of the line. They're English makers, <coughs> English makers' shoes, and um, they do pretty good work. Um, so, today, what we're going to do is we're going to resole, we're going to do full leather soles and combination heels. We're going to do blind stitching. Basically, blind stitching is that you don't see the stitches on the from the when you're looking at the sole. Uh, we we slice the sole open, open it up, stitch it, and then close it back down. It gives it a much more sleeker look. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we remove the insole just to kind of have access to the nails there. We'll start taking the heel apart. They got a pretty unique heel design. It's really their initials, JL. If you look here, JL. It's pretty cool, I think. So once the top lift is removed, we score a line that the heel base is glued on to the sole. Then we pry this up. Now we're going to salvage this piece because we're going to reuse it. It's still in pretty good shape. This way when the job gets done, it's the same height. You're not changing anything. I mean, we could replace it and keep it the same height, but why change something if it's not really necessary? This is still a solid piece of leather that we can reuse. <coughs> Basically the nails I push in and it pops up from the inside and I pull them out. Those are the nails that are holding the heels basically onto the onto the shoe itself. So we'll do the same once it gets once we get done with the soles. We'll put some on the inside as well. to hold the heel together. All right, now we get to remove the sole. Now, we look at the cork, and it seems to be in pretty good shape, but we're going to remove it and replace it, because what happens with cork is that it gets compressed, and although it may look okay, visually okay, it might be thinner in some spots than it is in other. So, We'll remove that and this way we get to look at the shank make sure that's in great shape if it's broken if it's cracked then we'll go ahead and replace that and that shank seems to be in pretty good shape it's a wooden shank so we'll keep that and most people will just kind of leave the cork like that I say it looks good leave it alone but you know the proper way that you're doing all this work might as well take it apart and just replace it. Now this particular shoe, the gentleman bought it used. Okay, There's lots of uh, great used shoes on the market. You just have to know your size, then you can find some good deals. Especially these higher end models. These, these shoes are $1,000 to $4,000 shoes. Some of the you know bespoke shoes that um, John Lobb makes are pretty pricey. I don't think this is a bespoke one, but 
nonetheless, it's a good uh, it's a good pair of shoes. So getting to a point where the previous owner has put his you know footprints inside, and and some of the low spots or high spots, they've kind of compressed that that um, cork. So when we do a resole like this, we put new cork in there. It gives the footbed just a little bit of new life where the new owner can wear it and make his own footprints. What we'll do is we'll put it, um, we'll wet the footbed a little bit once we put the soles on. We'll put them in a press to flatten the footbed out just a little bit. It's not going to get rid of the, it's not going to get rid of the previous footbed, but I mean the footprint, but it'll definitely help. All right, so we'll go ahead and continue to clean that up. We'll replace that. We'll sand the surface. We'll pick the stitches, and we'll go ahead and resole it. All right, let's continue. All right, so once we got this apart, now we're going to have to take these little stitches that you're looking on the sides. This is what kept the leather sole onto the shoe. Basically, it's a matter of just one at a time picking them out. This is the tedious part of the job because... Nobody likes this because it's just time consuming and you just have to literally sit there and pull them out one at a time. So I won't bore you with that, okay? Let's continue. Alright, so we've got, we, we glued the shank back, okay? Make sure that's secured. Now we're going to just kind of basically just glue the cork in there. The cork acts as a, a cushion and, and basically to fill the void of that piece so if you if you if you do cut coffee's view ready. All right, coffee's ready if i do cut view you can see that indentation that's that's you know it it's lower there than it is on these two spots when you put the cork in it levels the surface so when you're stepping down you don't feel these ridges all right so i'm going to show you guys give me a second i'll let me glue this cork on that's a piece of cork i cut from a sheet by the way and just put a little glue on I'm going to let this dry while I go uh, take a coffee break. I'll show you guys here. Maybe I can turn this camera around. This is my friend Chris. Hello. And this is our coffee break. I see he doesn't have any uh, the, the snacks or There's... something that goes with the coffee. There you go. Because this is bitter coffee, and, and you have to have some sweets with it. That's a little look inside my world. All right, let's continue. All right, so we're going to glue the cork on now. All right, Chris, take care, buddy. All right, Steve, I'll talk to you later. Bye. in here. Go ahead and sand that off. This stuff is really good. Good leather. So with shaping up, now we get to glue the surface, let it dry, hammer it together, and let's continue. Alright, so now that the glue is cured, alright, 
Basically spray that, wet that leather just to kind of give it the flexibility that you want. Now you want you want the JR to be centered as best as possible in the middle of the shoe. You just kind of eyeball a little bit, you know. It looks like it's in the center. Sometimes my uh, my hammer gets little you know divots in there, and when you're hammering it onto the leather, it makes marks. You don't want any marks on the leather. It's kind of a, it's kind of no-no. I try to shape the arch a little bit as best as I can. Now some cobblers they they have this this last turning right. I don't like that. I like mine stationary. My my worker here. His is loose. Let's see if I can get a picture. You see, it's loose. I don't really care for that because as I'm hammering, you know, I don't want the last to move. So, you know, you're going to kind of lose that shape. It's a preference choice, I guess. I just don't like it moving on me when I'm when I'm trying to hammer on the soles. All right, now this gets to be put in the press to to kind of press the soles down to compress that onto the shoe. Let me see if I can show you guys real quick. All right, let's see if we can get a good view of the press. There's the press. <coughs> That'll stay there for about maybe two minutes or so. And then uh, while that is sitting there, we'll go ahead and do the other shoe, get that prepped. And then kind of switch shoes. And then work on the other one as this one is being done. Again, just wet the sole. Flex it a little bit to break it in. And make sure that logo is about center. When you're hammering soles on, you have to get that nice shape. You can't hammer it on and, and have it crook it up like that a little bit. You got to give you got to follow that contour of the shoe. Okay. Sometimes again, when that last moves, it, it kind of throws off throws off that uh, that shape. That's why I just I just don't care for that thing to move. Each is to own though. Everybody does it differently. So. Make sure that shank area is nice and secure. Cool, it's coming along. Once we cut the edges, I'm going to work on the uppers a little bit. I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. And, um, and maybe uh, get it ready for stitching. And um, I think that's uh, it's coming along pretty good. Alright, let's continue. Alright, so we cut the soles off. Okay. Now... This isn't in bad shape. Most shoes have lots of creases, right? And um, and I tend to try to straighten that out as best as I can after the repair has been done. It looks good. But you can't get rid of these creases. These are normal wear. So when you start wearing them again, it's going to come back. But with a little bit of help of some shoe trees after you, after you wear them, and that will kind of slow that process down a little bit. Now... The way I do mine, I have this liquid is uh, basically rubbing alcohol and water mixture, okay? 
I spray on the inside of the lining as well. It doesn't stain anything, okay? But if you're gonna try it, you, you should try it on a small spot to see what kind of leather you have and, and whatever you're gonna use it for. Now, once the uppers are wet, okay, I warm that up a little bit. Now, you can do this at home. I use a heat gun. Don't make it too hot. You don't wanna burn the shoe. Now you can use like a hair dryer at home if you want to try it, okay? Just warm up those wrinkles over there, see if I can get you on, on camera. Just warm that up. Not too much. And then you want to get a set of shoe trees and insert them in there. Now these are a little bit large shoe trees. Not going to change the size of the shoe don't worry but it's going to take the space the void inside now once you're at the stage here see the wrinkles are almost straightened out right but don't forget the wrinkles have a memory so what we're going to do we're going to just kind of rub on that just massage the leather a little bit i know to some people it, this doesn't matter i know that but i get asked all the time after my repairs, how did you get rid of the wrinkles? How did you get rid of the wrinkles? So I'm just showing, maybe not all of you, but most of you, if you are interested. <coughs> now when, when the job gets done, this will look fairly new. Now, we're not, hold on, let wait till the compressor goes off. Now we're not going to make, we're not promising a brand new shoe, of course not, right? But let me tell you, once this, once the shoe gets done, man, it's going to look very nice. Now, this is nothing to do with the refinishing of the uppers, right? The cleaning, the conditioning, the moisturizing, polishing and all that. This step is just to get rid of, just to get rid of the wrinkles. Once this dries, then I come back clean the surface and get it ready for polishing the hammer comes in pretty handy see that's why you don't want any scratches on the hammer because if you're you know rubbing it on the surface of the shoe you don't want to damage the shoe I mean after all you're you're trying to restore it not do more damage so that's it that's how you get most of the wrinkles away So now we're going to let this dry for, for, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or so until that gets set in. And then we'll continue with the next step. All right, let's continue. One thing I forgot to mention about the JR Souls, John Rendenbach. This is top of the line stuff. I love it. Now you see this number, 1011? That's the thickness of the leather, right? These come in different thicknesses. Uh, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, I think 11, 12. But 1112, I think, is a little bit too thick for, for the dress uh, dress shoes. Most of the Goodyear Welta shoes I do, I use a 1011 on the soles. It's a little thicker, costs me a little bit more money, but you know what? It's so much more durable. Now, depending on the type of shoe, you can't use this on all shoes. Most of the Goodyear Welta shoes are the only thing that I that I recommend. If it's um, Italian loafers that doesn't have a welt, it's a, it's a Blake stitch, you don't want it too heavy where it's not going to flex on you. So this sole is not good for all application, this thickness I should say, not the sole. The sole is an awesome sole. Alright, let's continue. Alright, so as you can see, you're not so good looking now normal it's okay that's what happens when you try to work with leather it looks a little ugly at first but slowly slowly transforms into a thing of a beauty let me tell you now to clean the surface of the leather now there's a lot of products out there right I use turpentine or acetone now turpentine is not that strong 
it's not too bad. Now, depending on the stains or, or the type of leather, I'll go ahead and use acetone to strip it. Now, all you're doing is just wiping across that surface, removing old polishes. You see? Old po Turn that rag over a little bit, or paper towel, whatever you're using, so you don't push the dirt more into the leather. Now, before you run out and get some turpentine to clean your shoes, it's not what I'm using it's not a general general cleaner I mean it works pretty well I'm, I'm almost out of it it looks like it works pretty well just about on everything but you have to be careful you can't just go out and buy yourself and and apply it on the leather and and clean it and think that it's going to be you know brand new looking doesn't work that way so whatever you're doing try it on a small spot whatever product that you're using always test an area that's not visible in case you screw it up because if you screw it up then you gotta get a professional to clean up your mess it's gonna cost you more money all right so that's kind of that's kind of prep right here got a little bit of glue residue looks like on the toe area this is a piece of crepe I'm using it's a piece of rubber that removes it looks like it's a scratch. Not too bad though. What we can do here, we'll take a, uh, a 400 to 600 grit paper. It seems like every time I'm videotaping, I can't find my stuff. All right, I'll do that a little bit later. I usually have it on my apron, but let me see if it's on the other pocket. Aha, right there. All right, so basically it's a very, this is 1500 grit. So any light scratches, you can sand. Now, when you sand, you're gonna remove some color. You're gonna have to reapply that back on there so it's not as easy again as just hitting it sandpaper and making it look, making it look new. So kind of generally check over the shoe, make sure if there's any other light scratches. A little bit on the back here. Now depending on how much you're removing of the surface, either you can apply some creams to it, or you have to dye it again to add a little bit of a base for you to attach the cream to. I don't think we need to dye this one, this is not too bad. All right, so we're going to leave that alone the way it is now. Now next, we're going to open this channel right here so we can stitch it and, and do the blind stitch, basically, is what it's called. All right, let's continue. Now this can be a little tricky, okay? Because the leather is very dense, first of all. It's very hard. And you're slicing into it from maybe one millimeter, okay? approximately three quarters or half an inch towards the inside and um, and it's it's a sharp knife I, I put a new blade on you just got to take your time I'm going to show you now on a regular you know regular speed and then I'm going to speed it up to go all the way around the shoe. Because I don't want to videotape that long. And I'll show you guys before we stitch it what it looks like. As you can see, it's, it's starting to shape up now, right? So that gets lifted up like that. You see, you're just basically slicing the leather. That, that gets to be done all the way around the shoe. All right, let's speed it up a little bit. Okay. Now we've got sliced open. So now we're going to open a little channel. Okay. So we can stitch it. Now, the reason for that channel is that if you don't open the channel and you stitch and you press this down, 
you're gonna see a hump on top. That's, that's the hump of the stitch. So when you put a channel in there, the stitch counter sinks itself, and then you can glue this flat, and you'll never know that it was taken apart. All right, let's continue. Changing the bobbin color, it was red in there, I'm going to put black, not that it matters because the stitch is going to be covered. We'll save the red for another another project. Now there's there's setting on the machine uh, the stitch width, right? The stitches uh, can be different sizes. This particular one is pretty small, if you can see it or not. So we just kind of adjust that a little bit and stitch away. sure that the leather that you peeled back doesn't get in the way. It does sometimes. So I'm gonna... See how the stitches are in there? And once they get covered up, you'll never know it's stitched. All right, let's continue. All right, so basically what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna apply a little glue into the channel there after stitching. Just let it sit. When it dries, we'll come back and hammer the edges down. Trim the edges, finish the edges. Polish the uppers. Attach the heel and have a finished product. The customer's really anxious, by the way, to get these shoes back. I've got a surprise for him at the end. He'll he doesn't know what I'm gonna do. I hope he likes it. <laughs> well, I think he'll like it. He's a good guy. I've done some work for him before, so. I think he'll be okay with my surprise. All right, let's continue. All right, so now we get to push back what we cut off earlier. Now, this is kind of crudely cut. There's guys out there who are so talented, man, that that even their their slices are so beautifully done. This is this cut, I mean it's okay. It does the job. And once that's flattened, I put it on the edge of my last here and press that down again for any air pockets. Now manufacturers have machines to do this, right? It's really cool. I'd love to get my hands on one of those. Sure would make life simpler. Now 
that's done, stitched and hidden. We'll put the shoe trees back in and let them sit for a bit longer. All right. All right, what's next? We've got the heel, top lifts on already on the base. I usually attach these together first so I can sand the breast of the heel nice and smooth. Some people will put the heel base on first to the shoe and then they glue this on top and they'll use a coarse sandpaper to scratch that even. I don't like that. This looks much, much better. Nice and clean. All right, let's continue. All right, we've got the back of the back of the heel nailed on. Okay. Now, some people some people don't even do this. They'll put the heel on and nail all the way through to secure everything. You know, I, I prefer to do it this way. And and sometimes people say you're using too many nails. You know, I, I don't like I don't like my job to come back. I don't like it to fall apart. So I'm going to secure it as best as I can. So I, I don't want to have any, I don't want to lose sleep over something that I could have done and I, sh and I didn't do. Okay. So basically this is going to secure the, the heel part to the footbed, you know, clinch them together. Next, we're going to trim the edges. Okay. We're going to finish the edges, basically iron, heat iron, uh, you know, on the edges and then um, we'll finish the bottom we'll attach the heel and then work on the uppers and then we'll be ready to go all right let's continue now that we've got the edge trimmed we're gonna we're gonna burnish it basically right that's basically um, a hot iron that puts ink on the edges but before we do that I want to get the edge as smooth as possible no sandpaper marks whatsoever so we'll get the, the 1500 grit paper and we're going to wet sand the edges there. Now this is going to give it that nice and smooth finish. Now again, there, there's lots of different ways of doing things, okay? In every business, everybody does things differently. Now some guys, they'll sand the edges, which is fine. I mean, it's, everybody does things differently. I like to trim my edges. The trimmer leaves a little bit of a bead right on the edge there. I think it's kind of a classic look, you know. It's just the edge of a sole, I know. But the people who understand good quality, they'll see things like that. And I'm happy to provide that for them. Now, sometimes what people will do on blind stitching, they'll cut from the top of the sole, right? Like, right like that. I'll put a line there, see if you can see it. See a little line, light, just like that. And then they'll open it, stitch it, and glue it back. Well, the problem with that is you're going to see that line on the bottom of the shoe. By cutting it right on the corner, when you bring it together, and you trim it, and you polish it, and you burnish it, you don't see that opening where, you don't see it where it opened up. That's literally a hidden stitch. Pretty cool. I think they call it a European stitch too at some point. I don't know. So just keep this up for a couple of minutes just to get that nice and smooth finish. You shouldn't feel any bumps as you're running your hand over it. Just kind of run it over and you shouldn't feel any bumps. And this is ready for the edging now. Okay. All right, let's continue. All right, so basically this is the burnishing wheel. So we have a piece of leather right here. Okay, that gets pushed against one of these wheels here. It's basically an iron is what we call it. This shape is the same shape as the trimmer that we use to trim the edges. We let that heat up. We get an ink of wax, ball of wax, and apply it right on the hot iron there. Once you do that, it melts it on the iron and you press it against the edge of the shoe. So what it does is it pushes the hot ink right on the edges of the leather and seals the edges. It's 
not done yet, but it slowly starts to take shape. You have to buff that edge a little bit to give it that nice high gloss. And we will. You gotta continually add ink to it because the ink gets stuck on the edges of the sole. against it so it's getting there let's continue Okay, so we're going to install some of these, they're called French tips, or they're called Lulu tabs, okay? Basically, we open, cut a notch in the toe, and insert this in there flush with the leather. This prevents the toes from wearing out. Now, if you wear your toes, you drag your toes, this is not a bad idea to have these installed. Now couple of ways I do this sometimes I'll do it during the process of the sole and when I forget I do it after in this case I forgot to do it but it's okay though it's not an issue either way it's going to get done sometimes there's too much going on in my head and I tend to forget some things if I don't write them down and it just dawned on me that we need to do a French tip on this one. This has a little classier look to the shoe, I think. It's not for everybody, you know. Some people don't even know about these. I guess you can say these are old school. So now, now we mark that. We're going to put a little cut into the sole. We're going to cut back <laughs> the piece we glued together. Now, you will end up cutting some thread. Now, there are some customers who don't like that. For those customers, we offer to stitch back before we put the Lulu taps on. Now, is it necessary to do that? I personally don't think so, but it's up to the customer. That costs a lot more to do. We charge $45 for these French tips. If they want them stitched, it goes up to $120. But normally, the glue is pretty secure. Then you've got the screws screwing it down. So there's no chance of it going anywhere. But again, it's up to the customer. If they want me to restitch that, I can do that. Now, when I'm doing the soles, okay, before I stitch it, I should open this channel here. Yes, I know, I forgot. And therefore, the stitches won't be broken. But I think if I'm careful, I open the channel deep enough for the stitches to go into, I might not be able to touch the stitches. So now, I see the stitches, but they're not cut. Okay? All right. In case you're wondering. We'll go ahead and put some screws in there, flatten that out. And then we'll go ahead and start finishing the bottom. The uppers are looking better. I applied a little bit of a, a little bit of dye. A little bit of acrylic dye, not too much, just a little bit. Because acrylic really, it doesn't really absorb into the pores of the leather. It kind of sits on top, but... But if you put a little bit and then put conditioners and creams over on top of it, it looks it looks so much better. So it's getting there slowly but surely. All right, let's continue. All right, so once we got that 
area sanded and straightened out, I'll poke a hole, we'll get a screw. Screw that in. And we do that on all five holes. I've been doing a lot of these lately. Last week, I should say last two weeks, I had 32 pairs I did. Most of them were on, well, not their, not all new shoes. If the toes are worn down a little bit, we can build that up to level the surface in order to put these on. These are pretty popular on um, on Goodyear well to choose. You gotta have a little bit of substance, like a good sole and a welt to attach this to. And she's done, well, somewhat done. We're gonna trim the edges to make that even with the sole and just kind of roughly, just lightly sand that surface to kind of clean it up. But we'll do that along the with the bottom of the shoe, with the bottom staining of the shoe. All right, let's continue. All right, so this is the customer surprise. Basically, I'm going to put his initials in the shank of the heels. It's BK, that's K. Now what I did was I basically put it on there and just stenciled it and poked some holes there. And I'm going to put these gold, I should say brass, small, if, you can, if I can hold them, brass nails. Very small for decoration. Alright, shh, don't tell them, it's a surprise. Alright, let's continue. Okay, so I've got the initial. Put a little bit of glue in the back. Not too much, you don't want to damage the, the leather there. And just position it there. And start poking holes with that, basically. This way they're spaced evenly. Okay, once that gets removed, we take a little tool like that, just poke some holes. Go ahead and put the nails in it. Hope he likes it. 
Okay, so at this point we've glued the top lift and the heel base together to the shoe and we went and nailed the inside with threaded nails which are pretty secure or ring shank nails some people call them. So I'll put the last one in. And then once those are nailed we go ahead and glue the sock lining back on. That'll hide all the, the details of the nails. Now we're going to sand, finish the edges, condition the uppers one more time, and um, add a little bit of wax to it to give it that shine, and we're done. All right, let's continue. All right, so this is the customer surprise. Basically, I'm going to put his initials in the shank of the heels. It's BK, that's K. Now what I did was I basically put it on there and just stenciled it and poked some holes there. And I'm gonna put these gold, I should say brass, small. If, you can, if I can hold them, brass nails. Very small for decoration. All right, shh, don't tell them, it's a surprise. All right, let's continue. So we've got some leather bomb. Just gonna moisturize the leather a little bit. I've already done two coats of moisturizing. This is the last coat. Just want to kind of massage it into the into the leather. bottom too. And I also do it on the inside of the shoe also. After all it is leather lining, well the ones that have leather lining that is. Well, who am I kidding, most of the shoes I work on have leather lining. So as you can see we are almost done. So we'll let that dry. Got the French tip. Got his initials. This is how he wanted the soles to look. He wanted the plain tannish color with the combination heels, no tooling, no brass nails with the patterns or anything. And um, and he got what he wished. All right, let's continue. All right, welcome back. So we're done with this project. I think it turned out pretty good. Now you see, I have the shoe trees off and the wrinkles are still there, but they're minimal. They're not much at all. So as long as you wear the shoe trees after you, you put the shoe trees in after you wear them, it'll remain like that. Now, we've got the bottom. I sent pictures to the customer and he was thrilled with the initials, by the way. His initials are BK. JR soles and heels, French tips, clean polished condition. And you are done, another happy customer. Well, thank you for joining me. And uh, comments, suggestions, you know guys know what to do. All right, we'll see you again. Take care.